Welcome, welcome, welcome friends, beloveds, it is good to be here, sorry for the delay, but it is so blessed to be here tonight, it's Monday night, our first night of the week, and uh, God has been good to us and he carried us through, so greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. What a blessed time to live in. What a wonderful time to live in. Um, we're just coming from a, a Connect a Ministry Forum on, on Facebook via Zoom. And we thank the Lord for the opportunity to speak there as well. So I believe that God is going to do great and mighty things. 2020 is the year of supernatural speed, acceleration, and some of you that are despondent, right now I decree and I declare you are breaking out. Whatever you hold you back in the past will not hold you back because God is about to release his power, his fire, and his anointing upon your life. So we are here tonight, and tonight I would like to speak on the subject of the spirit of Elijah and uh, the mantle and but I'm not going to talk about the mantle per se and uh, we might go on tomorrow night on the mantle and then uh, as God leads he will direct our paths how we must go um, yesterday I said in church that I would like to speak tonight on the spirit of Elijah what we need to understand if we talk about the spirit of Elijah, there are three um, dimensions of the spirit of Elijah. It's the spirit of Elijah, it's the mantle, and also the power of Elijah. So the mantle is something separate, but the spirit of Elijah is also another aspect, and that is the power of Elijah. So God has opened this forum for us, or this door for us to minister on the spirit of Elijah. So the Bible tells me in the book of Malachi chapter 4 from verse 3 to 4, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Can we bow our heads tonight? Because I started late, we're not going to go into um, any news or whatever I noticed during this time. And for once, we will leave COVID-19 one side, unless we pray for people, their families that we need to pray for, or Black Lives Matters or All Lives Matters. We leave it because we know there's more important things to go into, and that is the Word of God. Father God, as we gather around your throne tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for the call of God, thank you for the anointing of God, thank you, Lord, that you called us for such a time as this, thank you that you raised up a people, a remnant, that will uh, um, seek you with all their heart and with all their minds, and with their whole understanding. I pray as you minister to Peter and said, after you, uh, uh, Jesus rose from the dead, he said, Peter, uh, Peter, do you love me? And I want to ask this question tonight, Lord, is our heart connected to you? Do we serve you because we love you? I pray tonight that every heart will turn unto you by the power of your word and by the power of the spirit of the living God. What a great day, what a wonderful day. There is something that we need to understand, beloved. Uh, the scripture of Malachi chapter 4 also is in Luke chapter 1 verse 17. And the Bible said they will prophesy and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So God wants to make 
already a people it's not just any people it is a people that will hunger after God a people that will thirst after God a people that will uh, be willing to give their all to the Lord now <coughs> there was a man by the name of Elijah now one of the great prophets in the Bible there were uh, uh, many of them and we know that Jesus is the greatest prophet Moses was a, a, a great prophet and also Elijah and Elijah the prophets and some, uh, Daniel was a great prophet of God. So there were many great prophets of the Lord, but some of the outstanding prophets, uh, according to my uh, heart and because of the areas that I moved in, it was Moses. Elijah, Elisha, although Eli, uh, um, I, uh, Isaiah the prophet, he prophesied more about the coming of the Lord. So it doesn't diminish the, the greatness of his prophetic words. But as we said yesterday in church, I said where there's a, a spirit of Elijah, there's also the rise of the spirit of Jezebel and we know what the spirit of Jezebel does the spirit of Jezebel wants to kill and destroy the true prophetic voice we live in a time and in a season where the enemy rise up against the church of the living God by COVID-19 and all these kind of things that are happening and so they said no you cannot you cannot meet because the church is spreading diseases, but if you look uh, in, in the riots all over in America, the people with, with COVID-19, they don't really care. And they're part of the masses, and they move in masses. And if you see where even in South Africa, when they go and say, we are hungry, we need food. And then you see there's a mass gathering of people around, and they don't care about their lives. All they want is whenever, whether they looting or whatever. And sometimes they're not even looting. They, they go and gather in mass meetings in town and you see there's a, an influx of people in that area. But we are here today because we believe God that the God that we serve is greater than any problem that we face. Now, what is the spirit of Elijah? We need to understand what is the spirit of Elijah. Now, the one thing that he does, it prepares the way of the coming of the Lord. Where they prepare the, 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 the Lord from coming back for his second coming or also for his manifest presence. So I can see two ways that the spirit of Elijah, the prophetic unction, prepare the way for the Lord to manifest him. And then also the spirit of Elijah prepared the church for when Jesus is coming back, for me, it is twofold. Some of you might agree with me. Some of you might not agree with me. <coughs> but that is not the problem right now. And just listen to my heart and listen to what God wants to do. <coughs> now, <coughs> the spirit of Elijah, he was a man of no compromise. And he confronted the spirit of idolatry. Idolatry, according to the word of God, if we go to the book, <coughs> to the Bible, the spirit of idolatry, Samuel said about idolatry to Saul when he disobeyed God, he said rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft. And stubbornness as the spirit of idolatry. Sometimes we are stubborn because we follow a, a belief system. And it become an idol. We do not check what we believe. If it's an, according to the word of God. <coughs> and witchcraft is a rebellion against the word of God. So... <clears throat> when there's rebellion against the word of 
God, then the spirit of idolatry rise up. Rebellion and re idolatry works together. I thank God tonight that we need to also allow God to be God. And uh, the third thing we need to understand, the spirit and the power of Elijah point us the way to Jesus. The spirit of Elijah is an indication. It's a, a sign that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. And we need to get to that place that we need to understand that the spirit of Elijah that's been released upon the earth or like the Bible said in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 he said in the last days God said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and my sons and my daughters will prophesy they will have visions they will have dreams they will have dreams so God will release his power upon his children now we need to understand there are two things the spirit of Elijah and the power of Elijah so the spirit of Elijah when it operated in the life of Elijah was the spirit of holiness the spirit of the fear of the Lord the spirit of judgment and also it restored the people back to God by power ministry and what we need to know is the spirit of Elijah also bring forth a spirit of intercession and travail. You know, the spirit of intercession was upon Elijah when the Bible told me and said that in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 and Elijah came to Ahab and said, except at my word there will be rain upon the land. Accept of my word. So three and a half years there was no rain. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, Go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain upon the land. So what did he do? He confronted the prophets of Baal and he destroyed 400 of them. He killed them. He destroyed them. So there was a confrontation with the power of darkness. So now today we don't kill people. But through intercession and prayer, we pray until God's fire come down from heaven and destroy demonic altars. That is the type of intercession that needs to rise up in the church of the living God. By confronting the power of the enemy. Earlier today, and I saw it on Facebook, and uh, one of the pastors and apostles were talking about in Durban, there was an initiation of a satanic church all over the world. We know that for a couple of years now, there was a, according to the constitution, that Satanism is legal in South Africa. Now where a law is instituted in a land, it gives the enemy, and that was in favor of Satanism or witchcraft, where there's a law instituted in a land, it gives the enemy free access into the land. Like for instance, abortion. The abortion clinics were uh, it is now legal in South Africa, which basically means it's a gateway. It gives the enemy a legal right because it becomes a blood sacrifice. So the spirit of Elijah confront these issues, bloodshed through crime and, and, and uh, gangsterism and all this stuff. It is bloodshed, a spirit of bloodshed. So the spirit of Elijah will confront these things. Why? Because they need to turn people back to God. And we need to turn people back 
to the presence of the Lord where they will have an encounter with the living God where people will meet with the great God that we serve the great Jehovah God it is time beloved that we will begin to stand upon the word of God that that same spirit that rested upon Elijah will come back upon the church as John the Baptist was a forerunner for Jesus to be born, for Jesus' ministry to come forth in power. He showed the way to Jesus. So the spirit of Elijah need to come back to the church that we do not show people to the preacher or show the people to the might of the church. No, but show the people the way back to Jesus. We need to tell the world that Jesus still save, that Jesus still heal, that Jesus is still uh, yesterday, today, forever be the same. I pray today that the spirit of Elijah that rested upon the uh, upon Elisha the prophet will come in a double portion that rested upon John the Baptist will come in such a way that Jesus will be lifted up upon the face of the earth. Today I watched the, our Facebook and somebody on Facebook asked, now where's the mask? I wondered by myself, what is going on? Is this person a believer or not? When Jesus saw that blind man, he spit on the ground and mixed the mud, dirt, and spit. I mean, he put, he used the saliva of his mouth and make a a a a a, a petty, and he placed it upon the eyes of the blind man and said, "Go and wash in the pool of Siloam." I wonder what the world will say if you use your, your spit, your saliva and put it on somebody's eyes. They will say COVID-19 instead of there's power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. So we must follow the example of Jesus, not this example of science. Thank God for science. But science is not the way. Jesus is the only way. We need to understand that the spirit of the Elijah had the spirit of intercession. When God said to Elijah the prophet, go and present yourself before Ahab because I will send rain upon the land. When he confronted the prophets of Baal, Fire came from heaven. Fire. I pray today as we confront every demonic power that's been raised up, the beast of the east, and all this uh, uh, vaccines. I mean, what a wonderful invention. Israel invented something, you walk through it, and COVID-19 dies on, in your body. A scanner you go through dead. Don't you think that the presence of Jesus can kill every virus? Don't you think the presence of Jesus upon the life of the believer can destroy every sickness and every disease? Don't you believe that the same uh, Jesus that used Peter the Apostle in Acts chapter 5 with the shadow of people, people a place there, the mats in the street, so at least the shadow of Peter might fall on some of them, and they were all healed. I pray today that the, uh, the, the that same anointing, the same power, not a double portion of the anointing that rested upon Elijah or Elisha, but more the New Testament anointing, the anointing that rested upon Jesus. 
When he said in the book of John chapter 14 verse 12, if you believe in me, the works that I do shall you do also. And even greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my father. I go unto my father. Yes, the same anointing, the same power, the same miracles, not another anointing. The same presence that rests upon Jesus. Doesn't the Bible tell me in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That will quicken your mortal body. That will raise up your mortal body. Isn't it the same Holy Ghost uh, that raised Jesus from the dead. Cannot the same Holy Spirit today destroy every power of the enemy destroy every power of the devil so when Elijah the word of the Lord came to him go present yourself before Abanus will send rain upon the land what happened to Elijah what did he do he present himself before Ahab and said Ahab Come, if you are for God, if there's anyone, any fire came from heaven after he built an altar. Fire came, but there was no rain. And the most important thing is he birthed the prophetic word for rain to come through intercession. Through intercession, he prayed seven times. How many of you prayed once, twice, three times and give up and say, no, it cannot happen. You pray until God answered from heaven. Don't give up. Don't stop. God is about to do a mighty miracle in your life. Even in this time where there's no jobs, where there's no income, God is about to break forth in power. God cannot lie. It is impossible when we put our hope, our trust in a loving God. There's something that we need to know. The spirit of Elijah carry also the power of Elijah. Number one, what is it? That Elijah could do what the other prophets couldn't do. He confronted the prophets of Baal. The Baal prophets, he confronted them. He called fire from heaven. God used him in doing miracles. Multiplication of food. Raising the dead. That is part of the spirit of Elijah raising the dead I mean God touched him in such a way that he outran the best chariots the best horses the most luxurious chariots Ahab's chariots he outran them to Jezreel I mean Imagine, yes, Ahab riding in his chariot to Jezreel. Poops! There goes Elijah the prophet under the anointing and the power of God. I want to prophesy over your life. Supernatural speed is your portion. Not even horses. And horses mean power, strength, mobility. It means ideology. It means a belief system. It means a power. What people believe and think. I'm here to tell you today. That the spirit of the Lord. When it comes upon you. The power. The same anointing. Not another anointing. But rested upon Elijah. 
will fall upon you and you will outrun the chariot of Ahab, your enemy. You will outrun. You will go. You will be there before them. Those who have small businesses, those who have big churches and you are coming on in a small church. You that are struggling in your business because of supernatural speed. How did it manage to outrun the chariot? He prophesied, I will send rain upon the land. God is going to send rain upon your land. God is going to send rain upon your life. Intercession was the key. Deep intercession. He outran the one that wants to stop him. There's something that you need to know. That the spirit of Elijah, when the Lord spoke to Elijah, he said to Elijah, after he came out of the cave, after he came out of the cave, he ran in fear from Jezebel. Now sometimes it's a good thing when you don't know how to handle the situation to go into a retreat in a place of isolation, in a place of seclusion. We've been put in a place of incubation. And but when he came out to some, they say 12 years, other 17 years, I don't know how many years. But when he came out, he went and he released prophetic words. God still gave him an assignment. And when he came out of that cave, he came out in power. Nobody could touch Elijah the prophet. Elijah received supernatural provision. God wants to release supernatural provision upon your life. You will know it is not the work of a man, it's the work of a living God. Why will I preach? I don't preach this to raise money because God is our provider. He's our miracle worker. I don't say so into my life and God will bless you. No. I want to tell you when you trust God, a supernatural miracle can happen in your life. Why? Because it's greater than our problems and our struggle. In the spirit of Elijah, let it come upon you. Let that same power, that same anointing, you are a poor runner to tell people about Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you, if, if Elijah could outrun his enemies, let me tell you, you can outrun whatever the enemy wants to do and receive and live under the blessings of the Most High God. Something else. Elijah received angelic manifestation. When he ran from Jezebel, that is the power of Elijah. When he ran away from Jezebel, angels come, came to feed him. Angels will manifest in your life. Amen. Angels will manifest in your life. God will show himself mighty, mighty and strong on your behalf. We pray today that the God of miracles will show up in your life. He will release his helpers. He will send people into your life. I pray today that God will manifest himself. He can't do the impossible. He's still the God of the impossible. That's why it's amazing. 
when this world will want us, the church, to maintain social distancing. When we go to church, we have to obey certain laws. But let me tell you, when the power of God comes upon me, I don't care about the law. I care about the word of God. I care to release the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit upon somebody's life. Because the God that we serve is a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a miracle working God. Nothing is impossible with God. If I can't lay hands on the sick, not every time we need to lay hands on the sick, but I lay hands on the sick since I was 82, 19, 20 years old. And God never fails. There's no virus that's too big that cannot live when the power of God is manifested. Yesterday in church, I told people, look into your hands. See what is in your hands. If you're a child of God, the healing virtue and the power of God is in your hands. The same fire, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in your mortal bodies. It will quicken your mortal bodies. You shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be upon your food and upon your water. And it will take sickness away from among you. None will miscarriage or be barren in the land. And I will give you a full lifespan. Then he said, I will send my terror ahead of you. My terror, the power of the Holy Ghost. He said he will send his terror ahead of you. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw it to confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and the Hittites out of your way. What is it that you face? What is it that you face today? The God that I serve is so great, He will turn your life around. He will turn your life around. Luke chapter 1 verse 18, he said, And the child grew, and he became strong and the spirit, in the spirit. And he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. He grew, he became strong, and he lived in the desert. There's a time for public appearance. We know that the desert is a place of seclusion. This is talking about John the Baptist. It's a place of separation. The more you separate yourself, the greater your assignment. The more you separated yourself, the more you wait upon God, the greater the anointing and the power of God upon your life. We live in a great time. We live in a, a good time. We live in an extraordinary time. This is the time and the season. You know, when the spirit of Elijah we ministered on, on the anointing of Yehu to destroy idolatry, to destroy the work of the devil to destroy Jezebel. It was the word of the Lord coming from the mouth of Elijah the prophet that was fulfilled through Elisha. The word of the Lord was transferred from one generation to another generation. There's a generation that's going to rise up 
that will not be ashamed and unafraid. They will face the powers of hell. They will not be intimidated what other men fear, what other women fear. Whether you are at your house and your body is sick, don't worry. The only thing that will die is corona. It is every disease that is in your body. The doctors might have told you there is no hope for a family member. But I'm here to tell you right now, by the spirit of the living God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that every death situation in your family will come to life again. The dead will be raised. Healings will take place. No, your family will not die. You shall live and it not die. Your family will not die. You will live tonight. I speak it, I decree it, I declare it right now. It is time that we rise up in that power and in that spirit. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is an eternal spirit. The same spirit that operated in Moses. The same Holy Ghost that operated in Joshua. That made the sun stood still. That they could fought and won a battle. The same God that operated through Samuel. Through David. Through Samson. The same Holy Ghost. That same power. That operated through Elijah. And through the Old Testaments of old, through the people of old, through Peter, James, and John, through Paul, through Timothy, through the great John Wesley's, Charles Finney's, the same power that operated through them, A. A. Allen Chaco. Reynard Bonke. All these great men of God. Archbishop Benson Idahusa. I want to mention the names. Why? Because it's the same Holy Ghost. That will work in your life. And cause a miracle to happen. The same Jesus. Will step into your life. Believe him today. That is yesterday, today, forever be the same. Yes, we believe God. The God that I serve is not dead, is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same Jesus. The same Jesus. He is here tonight to touch you in a supernatural way. He is yesterday, today, forever be the same. The God that I serve tonight is here, beloved. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. Yesterday in church, I read the scripture in the book of Thessalonians that the spirit of lawlessness is the spirit that is working in the world today. To prepare the way for the Antichrist. The Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, will manifest himself. And because the man of lawlessness manifests himself, is to prepare the way for the Antichrist. As the spirit of Elijah prepared the way for the coming of Jesus. So the spirit of lawlessness is operating in this world and because the spirit of lawlessness is operating I want to tell you right now there's an increase of the anointing of God for the spirit of the living God to operate in this world that will destroy the works of Satan the works of hate Satan is a killer Satan is a destroyer. 
1 John chapter 3 verse 8. For this purpose the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. He was manifested to destroy Satan's works. Today, by the manifestation of the power of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of lawlessness, we destroy it in the name of Jesus, in our lives, in our community. When the enemy attack your finances, when the enemy attack your children, when the devil attack every area of your life, it's a spirit of lawlessness that is at work. I come up against that devil in the name of Jesus. I bring the spirit of Christ upon your life where there is divine order, where there is divine provision. I release rain upon your life. The same power, supernatural speed come upon you now. Supernatural acceleration is coming upon you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of Elijah. He was fed by ravens. God will provide. Ravens are meat, flesh, eating birds. So he brought meat to Elijah. How is it that a greedy meat eating bird? There are people that are so greedy, they don't want to give to others. They have more than enough, they look for themselves. But right now, God will minister to them. Every greedy spirit be broken, they will come and minister into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's something that's so beautiful with Elijah the prophet, beloved. When they were looking for Elijah, he went up to heaven. And uh, in a chariot of fire, the sons of the prophet said, maybe the Lord translated him from one place to another. So which basically means they were used to looking for Elijah here that the Lord will transport him from one place to another. Supernatural transportation. Supernatural translation from one place to another. So they went and looked. But Elijah was there when he was taken up to heaven. God is doing something supernatural in the church. Supernatural dimensions is restored into the house of God. Supernatural dimensions. If it happened in the Bible, it will happen once again. The God that I serve is not a dead God. He's a living God. He's a miracle working God. He's the God of yesterday, today, forever be the same. Do not act like the church is dead. Do not act like the God that we serve is dead. No, he's alive forevermore. The spirit of Elijah point to the coming of the Lord. Let that same spirit manifest in your life. Let that same Holy Ghost come upon you today to point you to the way that you should go. Walk in the power of the spirit of the living God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible said, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. 
Now, there might be, because the Bible said here as well, that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. 2,000 years ago, Paul said it. But yeah, he's also talking about the end time when the Antichrist will reveal himself. But while he's at work in your life, when Jesus show up in your life, that demon of lawlessness, I want to read it to you again. Whom the, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. May Jesus manifest in your life now. By the splendor of his coming, may he manifest in your life. May he manifest in your life by power and by might, by lightning and by force, by the breath of his nostril, by the breath of his mouth, as I breathe over you, whatever sickness is upon your body, I destroy it by the breath of the mouth of the living God. Let the Ruach Kodesh blow over you right now. <clears throat> Breathe over you right now. Let the wind of the Spirit move into your life. Lord, show yourself mighty and strong on the life of your people. Do not pass us by. Move upon the life of your church. Move upon the life of your people. I pray today, every power of the enemy, every power of darkness, Father, I pray for my brother Hubert and their family today. I break the power of sickness and disease. The power of the spirit of infirmity, I break your power. I destroy your power. I come up against the work of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak right now. Resurrection power come upon brother Arthur right now. Resurrection power fill him this very hour. I curse sickness and disease, spirit of infirmity. Raise him up for your glory. Raise him up for your glory. Raise him up for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I curse sickness and disease. I curse sickness and disease. The Bible says, no weapon that are formed against you will prosper. No tongue that is raised up against you will stand. It is the inheritance of the saints to be victorious. No tongue, whoever plays a curse upon your life, you've just been delivered and been set free. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name, in Jesus' mighty and glorious name, there's some other people that we need to pray for that I don't know. Father, I pray for all the nurses in the hospitals that died of COVID-19 or those who suffered. I break the power of the enemy according to your word. Father, according to your word, that you prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies in the midst of sickness and disease, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear evil. Those who are affected through any form of sickness, cancer, rheumatoid arteritis, osteoporosis, when the doctor said nothing can be done, 
Right now, I curse that devil. I command it to come out of that bones. I command stomach cancer to go. I command lung cancer to go. I command every form of cancer to dry up from its roots and die in the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life in the name of Jesus. Do tonight what no man can do. Touch their bodies. HIV AIDS are healed right now. HIV AIDS are healed right now. There's somebody uh, with HIV AIDS, the doctors didn't give you long to look right now. I speak resurrection power. Resurrection power. Let it flow into her body right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch her by your supernatural power. Rabba satana la manda la bakurbona la mandia. I command every spirit of fear to go. Every spirit of fear to go right now in the name of Jesus. What you fear will not come upon you right now. Allow the faith of Jesus to arise upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, for Lord, for all the healings, all the miracles that you have done in the past. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to multiply it a hundredfold, a thousandfold in the life of your servants. Thank you, Lord, for provision, financial provision. Our people are crying, Lord. Our people are dying. Father, I thank you that you will provide Release your ravens, release your helpers in the life of your servants in the name of Jesus. Those who cry out for deliverance. I pray for those who are bound by drugs, alcohol, somebody that's in gangsterism. Right now, I break the power of the enemy upon your life. There's even a threat upon your life that if you step out of that gang, and it's a hard living gang, right now that you will die. Right now, whoever made that friend upon your life will be removed in Jesus' name. And you will know that the Lord is God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We break the power of hell over that young man's life. Hallelujah. And that young man, you got a girlfriend that is saved. And she prayed for you for a long time. And now you want to come out. I break the power of darkness over your life. I command fear to go. Go and serve Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. I pray right now by fire and by force, every drunk den. Every house of gangsterism, every satanic altar that's been raised up against the purposes of God, every witchcraft altar, receive the judgment of God, receive the fire of the Holy Ghost, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Be set free. We pray right now that every altar, every voice, every place, where your name has been taken to bring you down. Every marine power receive the fire, the judgment of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children will walk free from the spirit of intimidation and fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for salvation. We give you all the honor, the praise, the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, beloveds. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing our live broadcast. Thank you for sharing our, even our audio clips. Share it with family, friends, and let them share it with people who need it. And uh, go to our YouTube 
cha channel and subscribe to it. God bless you. God will keep you. He will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God will give you peace. And in this season and in this time, you will experience an, a miracle out of the hand of God. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And in your tears, God will show himself mighty and strong. Amen and amen. Be blessed, beloveds.